Good morning, and thank you all for joining us for today's Worksite Wellness Lunch and Learn. I'm Carol Battle, and I manage our Worksite Wellness Program. Please note that we do offer closed captioning for this event. For captioning in English, click on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. Or if you'd like captioning in Spanish, click on the link in the chat to choose that option. Today's webinar will dive into the importance of fiber in our diets. Many of us may not meet the daily recommended requirements for fiber, and as a result, we miss out on the amazing benefits that it offers. Regulating blood sugar, controlling cholesterol and hunger, and of course, promoting regular bowel movements are a few of the important benefits of fiber. Today, we will explore suggestions on how we can increase fiber in our diets. Following the presentation, our speaker, Katie Godin, will do a live cooking demo showing us how to make two delicious breakfast dishes that are loaded with fiber. Katie's a registered dietitian who's been in practice for over 16 years. She focuses on helping individuals. Hold on. She focuses on helping individuals improve their knowledge and relationship with food and meet their personal health goals. Lifestyle Medical Centers is an in-network nutrition counseling service. For those enrolled in the state health plan, virtual and in-person visits are covered at 100% as long as you use an in-network provider. We have dietitians across the state. To find one near you, just log into the state health plan portal, which is listed on this cover slide. As a reminder, everyone who's registered for this event will receive a recording of today's presentation as well as the recipes. To find past Lunch and Learn recordings or see what's coming up, visit our website at oshr.nc.gov slash wellness dash webinars. You will find loads of valuable information there. During our presentation, you can submit questions through the question and answer, and members of our NC Flex team will help answer them. Additionally, Katie saved a few minutes at the end of the presentation to conquer any questions that we're unable to get to. Now let's welcome Katie and lunch and learn. Thank you, Carol. You're hey, welcome. everybody. Um, it's so nice to see some sunshine out there. I do wish it was a touch warmer, but I know that's coming. And we did have some beautiful days last week. So I'm trying not to complain too much, but I know we're all kind of in that in that zone of really wanting some warmer weather. So, um, but I am happy to be here today with you guys to talk about the benefits of fiber. You know, this is something that I was really excited to present on because I feel like you know, yes, you've heard of fiber. I'm sure you've heard of fiber, but sometimes it's as if we don't really know what that means. What is it exactly? Where is it exactly coming from? Um, how much do we need, you know, more importantly, and how do we get it in in a reasonable um, way? And so, so that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. And Carol did give um, a nice introduction. Thank you so much. And I've been working with lifestyle for quite a while now. Um, I'm sure some of you even see me at this point, which I always love. It's absolutely absolutely a joy when I get to meet someone in person, but also really exciting when I get to see someone who lives, you know, miles and miles, you know, away across the state and I get to see them virtually, um, which is just such a perk uh, with your insurance being able to kind of do the virtual side of things these days. So um, hopefully this kind of sparks some interest if you've been thinking about doing some nutrition counseling or looking into this a little bit further. Um, I hope that you take that step for yourself because it really can be such a valuable tool. Um, and, you know, just if it's just to learn just a few things new and just take some time for some self-care. So, um, all right, guys, well, let's get started. And let's just talk some, some general here. You know, what is fiber exactly? 
like I said, you've probably heard the word many times um, and maybe you even know somewhat of what it is, but specifically it's the indigestible parts of plant foods. So um, it's going to come from things like fruits and vegetables and whole grains. And we're going to get into lots of examples here in a minute. Um, but overall, there are two different types. Okay. And so we're going to talk about those first. Those types are soluble and insoluble. All right, so we're going to get into the specifics of those two here in a second, but I wanted to highlight here something that is pretty alarming. Um, you know, fiber is something that is extremely important, and Carol mentioned some of the health benefits here, and we're going to get into some more in a second, but only 5% of women and 9% of men are meeting the daily requirements for fiber intake, and to me, it isn't too shocking, to be honest, because, you know, getting our um, intake of fruits and vegetables, which is a big, big part of meeting our fiber needs. But getting those five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables every day is one of the things that we just really struggle with as a whole. And in my you know, as far as what I'd like to do, um, you know, with people in my sessions is to really talk about how to get more fruits and vegetables. in. we oftentimes hear, you know, when we're trying to either lose weight or be healthy, you know, is we need to pump the protein. Well, I'm really trying to shift the, the discussion to, yes, we do need protein, but we need it. We need other things too. And fiber is a really, really important part um, of what we need to be doing and eating in a day. So how much should we be eating? Um, okay, so if you're going to get really specific here, you know, we should be consuming around 14 grams per 1000 calories. All right. But we we certainly don't throw out that kind of a specific recommendation. We, we kind of just blanket statement roughly about 35, excuse me, 25 to 35 grams of fiber throughout the day. OK, um, and that's something that I help people learn how to achieve. I mean, it really is manageable and it is realistic to eat 25 to 35 grams of fiber in a day. But we do need to understand what it is where it comes from, and what are some, some tips in order to kind of make that happen throughout the day. Um, okay, so let's talk about soluble fiber. So soluble fiber um, does it's, it's the, a lot of different things here, okay? So one example here I've shown you is the, the pretty little apple you see on the screen. It's one of my favorite fruits. Um, it's something that I like to consume, you know, every day, right? You should be eating an apple a day. Um, but in my opinion, um, you know, having something like an apple for an afternoon snack, that is one of my absolute favorite things because it does give me energy and makes me feel good. And so sometimes I think when we really connect with the way we feel from eating some of these foods, we really are likely to continue to eat in that way. Um, but as far as the benefits of eating these soluble fibrous foods, it helps to stabilize blood sugar and it does survive specifically slowing the rate of absorption, okay? Um, the, the, when we kind of eat foods that have fiber in them, we they digest a lot slower. They just are more abs absorbed a little bit slower in the body. And a lot of times that helps with things like um, uh, cholesterol can lower our total and dietary cholesterol can help with our blood sugar stability, like I just mentioned. Um, but as far as how it lowers total and dietary cholesterol, because Maybe you guys have heard fiber is a part of a heart healthy diet. Well, why exactly is that? Okay. So specifically it's binding to cholesterol particles in your small intestines and it's preventing that cholesterol from entering into the bloodstream. All right. And so that's where kind of some not so good things can happen is when too much cholesterol starts to enter our bloodstreams, gets into our arteries, causes them to be um, clogged essentially, and for blood flow to not happen as efficiently. And so what we want is for it to be circulated in a very healthy manner. And fiber helps to, is a big part of that. So another benefit of soluble fiber is it can lower blood pressure. Um, so the, the mechanism behind that is that there's um, something called nitric oxide. And there's an increase of that. And this is a vasodilator, okay? So consuming lots of fiber helps to increase this nitric oxide or this vasodilator that helps with blood pressure management. Um, 
Improving serum lipid, lipid levels is basically your, um, you know, when you go to the doctor and you get your labs done, so you look at things like total cholesterol and HDL and LDL, and those are your serum lipid levels. And those are gonna, of course, show improvement, as I just mentioned, by the um, effect that, that fiber has on your dietary cholesterol levels within the body. And then also reducing inflammation. So there's something called C-reactive protein. I'm not sure if you guys have heard that term before, and maybe not if your doctor hasn't felt that it's been necessary to discuss with you. He, she, he maybe doesn't think that you have any indicators for that to be of an issue, um, but it's a marker of inflammation in the body. And so fiber tends to lower your blood levels of this C-reactive protein that can be present in high amounts when we have certain conditions such as um, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, heart disease. So we essentially want low levels of the CRP and studies show that fiber helps to make that happen, okay? And so overall reducing inflammation. Okay, let's talk about some sources of dietary fiber. Um, and in a minute, I'm gonna get into lots of different examples with pictures and amounts of fiber, but I just wanted to kind of first start with just some general um, examples of just this soluble fiber specifically that I was just talking about. So psyllium husk, which you guys have maybe heard of mostly through the um, fiber supplement Metamucil. Um, I certainly am promoting foods first, so I talk about lots of foods here today, but we will get into what if we aren't able to manage to get the 25 to 35 grams of fiber effectively for, there's maybe a few reasons, um, but anyway, if you're not able to, then fiber supplements are available, so we are going to touch on those later in the presentation. Um, but some other food sources include oats or oat bran, um, beans such as black beans or kidney beans, certain plant-based sources of protein like tofu and edamame. Um, it's really wonderful when you have protein sources that are also fiber sources. And I'll be honest with you, that is going to come from plant sources of protein, as we talked about what fiber actually is, is that undigested source of plant matter. So it's going to come from um, these, these, these proteins like tofu and edamame are going to have kind of that double benefit there, protein and fiber both at the same time. Uh, and then you've got your fruits and vegetables here, carrots, cucumbers, apples, strawberries, citrus fruits, although I'm not discouraging all the others that aren't listed here, but these are specifically noted and researched to be those good sources of soluble fiber that help with the things that I just talked about. All right. So let's talk about the insoluble fiber for a second. So insoluble fibers role is to attract water to the digestive tract, okay? So essentially fiber has very similar, um, very similar benefits, but you know, if someone is really struggling with constipation, I might promote some insoluble fiber sources alongside soluble ones as well, but I might promote some insoluble fiber sources throughout their day because of its research and um, backing on the aid with constipation and, um, and helping with bowel regularity. Um, fiber in general can help with weight management, but in, in, in general, this um, insoluble fiber is going to help contribute to a feeling of fullness. And the reason for that, <clears throat> excuse me, is the fact that one of the reasons, I guess you could say, is that it is digested a lot slower, as I mentioned before, um, when it stays kind of in your stomach and travels a little more slowly through the stomach into the digestive tract, you are going to feel naturally feel full longer, okay? So that's part of the reason fiber can be so beneficial. And Fibrous foods that I'll mention here in a second and what I've already mentioned, but just in general, these fibrous foods are very nutrient dense. They're full of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants that we need to just feel our best and to just thrive and help with the prevention um, of chronic disease and so many other things. 
All right, so let's talk about some sources here of this insoluble fiber. Wheat bran, so most beans and then lentils. Beans and lentils are something that I really encourage a lot for people to use in their day and in their diet because of the fact that I just mentioned earlier, kind of a double whammy. You've got protein and fiber coming from these. And I really feel that they're just so lovely and wonderful for so many reasons that we should be learning how to eat them more. And so I love to talk to people about how to do that. They're a great source of insoluble fiber. Um, shredded wheat cereal, whole grains in general, flax seeds, um, peas and turnips specifically, and the skin of fruit. Okay. So these are all good sources um, of that insoluble fiber. Okay. All right. So let's talk about some of the high fiber fruits here. Um, fruit in general is great. And I don't want to discourage fruit at all if it's not on this list. I'm just highlighting some of the top contenders here, if you will, that are going to have some really good sources of fiber to them. And raspberries kind of takes the metal here. It's, it's the gold star, all right? It has the most fiber per serving of any fruit. Um, it's probably one of the highest fiber foods that's out there considering the serving size of it. Um, it has eight grams of fiber per one cup. And so if you don't like raspberries, that's okay. I mean, there is no pressure here to start eating things you don't like. I'm hoping that through all the foods we talk about here, you will pick out lots of different things that you um, would enjoy and kind of figuring out how to eat those more throughout your day. Um, but raspberries, pears are really good. And one thing about pear and apple is that you would want to eat the skin to get more fiber. Um, and so when you think about just that, that classic comparison between do we eat the fruit or do we have the fruit juice, right? So the fruit is going to be the fibrous example there where the fruit juice has been stripped of all of that. So that's why we kind of encourage, you know, to kind of limit juice consumption and really focus on the food side of things. Um, bananas, strawberries, and even though you might be looking and saying, hmm, I don't know about that avocado, is it that a fat source? Well, it is a fat source, but it's also technically a fruit. And so I love that avocado. I really do. If you don't love it, that is okay. There's lots of other examples, as I mentioned, but an avocado is just wonderful for that fiber content, but also or as I just mentioned, that fat content, that healthy fat. So, um, okay, so just to kind of yeah, give you a little snapshot here of some good high fiber fruits to include in your day. Let's get into those vegetables though. Um, so I love to challenge people's thinking. I know some of you might be looking on this page and look at peas and potatoes and think, hold on, I don't think you're supposed to eat peas and potatoes when you're eating healthy. Well, I certainly disagree with that. Um, I do get that in these are these two particular examples here, peas and potatoes that are on this list are carbohydrates, okay? They're a carb and they're also a vegetable. Um, with good amount of fiber, as you can see, a half a cup of peas has around four and a half grams and a potato, but with the skin has four grams. So what I usually tell people is that why don't we look at this as a great source of fiber, a vegetable, but also we can look at it as a carbohydrate. And so if we're someone who has diabetes or pre-diabetes, or we have insulin sensitivity or, or insulin resistance, excuse me, we're watching our carbohydrate intake for some reason, yes, these need to be included, but I think that they're a wonderful source of fiber and that we should look at them that way and learn how to balance them with other wonderful things like a large salad with um, a nice piece of um, fish or lean meat or other sources of plant-based protein to kind of round out that plate. Um, you can see some other examples though, cauliflower, 
and broccoli. You can see here that the raw cauliflower has a little less and the cooked broccoli has a little bit more. Sometimes you might find a couple grams difference between the way that it's prepared. Um, it does not mean that, that you know, you shouldn't eat raw vegetables and you should eat only cooked. It just means it's nice to kind of know that, right? It's nice to know what some of the examples are and how to kind of fit these in throughout the day. A cup of baby carrots has a little bit more than the cauliflower, has about four grams. Um, I also know that sometimes to sit down and eat a whole cup of baby carrots might seem a little overwhelming. So maybe we just eat half a cup and we kind of consider that, you know, we might eat a half a cup later. Maybe we're also having a salad with that half a cup of chopped um, baby carrots and that's adding extra fiber. So, you know, I like to help people figure this out. It's what I do and I enjoy it. And so if you're kind of looking at some of this and thinking, oh, this looks overwhelming. It's a lot of numbers. It's a lot of examples, um, but it's definitely something that you're able to do. And I think it's just kind of talking with someone and kind of having them lay it out for you and picture how a day would look could be really helpful. Um, and then one of my favorite things highlighted up to the right, a cup of roasted Brussels sprouts. If you've not tried them, please don't knock them. I know that they get a bad rap um, and it's all in the way that you prepare these vegetables also. Um, I find that one of the number one reasons why people aren't meeting their fiber needs is because they've been selective eaters for a while with the fruit and veggie side of things because they're just not aware of how to prepare them. And so that's something that of course we also try to talk about with people as well is just cooking methods and roasting is one of my absolute favorite things to do with vegetables. Um, but with the Brussels sprouts, just a little drizzle of some balsamic vinegar, um, maybe even a little sprinkle of some fresh um, uh, shaved Parmesan cheese. These are things that really jazz up that dish and make it so much more enjoyable. Um, vegetables can be good and they can be fun. I think we just have to kind of learn how to do that sometimes. All right, let's talk about some grains here. So when it comes to grains, um, you've probably heard, you know, we wanna choose whole grains, we wanna choose brown rice over white rice, um, all very good points to make because those are going to contribute to a little more fiber than the um, other. Um, I also wanted to touch on something. I have a patient of mine who might be listening right now, but um, mentioned that, you know, well, what about gluten-free? You know, because you know, if you're gluten free, are we kind of not going to be getting enough fiber because we're not able to consume these, you know, whole grains, we're not able to consume um, the wheat side of things. Well, I'm here to say that that doesn't matter. Okay, so if you look at fiber as a whole, yes, grains make up part of the fiber content, but it's a lot of fruits and vegetables and beans and nuts and seeds. And, and even if you do you know include grains? There's certain things like quinoa and brown rice, um, oats. There's things that you can get gluten free. You can get things like um, if you're thinking of pasta, uh, I have here the bonza pasta, which is made from chickpeas, and it has five grams of um, fiber per serving per one cup serving. So you're certainly not sacrificing lots of fiber by being gluten free. Okay. So I just wanted to touch on that for a second. Um, and, and yeah, I think varying up your grains is really important. Um, and if you're someone who's grain free or doing something like keto, I don't think that there's any worry there either. I think that you're just going to need to pay attention to making sure that you're getting lots of the right types of vegetables. Um, and so there are certain scenarios where it may seem tricky and that's where sometimes with the help of your medical provider, fiber supplementation might be warranted given there might be certain scenarios where getting enough fiber might be difficult, okay? Um, but, but yeah, so I just wanted to highlight some of the grains here. We're gonna 
We're obviously going to be dealing with oats today, but I love quinoa. I love whole wheat spaghetti. I love, you know, doing the chickpea um, pastas or the lentil pastas. You can kind of vary it up and change it out. Um, even popcorn. Obviously, it, the, the what you're putting on the popcorn that can sometimes shift that nutrient profile, but um, three cups of just air popped plain popcorn is a really good source of fiber and is considered a whole grain. Okay. All right, so let's talk a minute about nuts and seeds and beans. All right, so beans, like I mentioned, are one of the best. I mean, you can see right there, half a cup of black beans or in a half a cup of lentils have about seven and a half grams. So really, really a strong source of fiber here. Um, something like chia seeds, which is also gonna be featured today, um, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about before I make the recipes, but they, for just a tablespoon, have five grams and lots of other health benefits that I'm gonna highlight here in a second. So um, honestly, Chia seeds, in my opinion, should be looked at as a dietary supplement given the nature of their nutrient profile, but they are certainly an excellent source of fiber. Um, certain nuts like pistachios and almonds. So a serving of these. So I've given you kind of an example of how many, but roughly about three-ish, three and a half grams of fiber um, in those as well. So again, guys, you know, when you think about having up to nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day, where a serving has maybe about five-ish on average, maybe a little less, but you're also eating some of these other really good fibrous foods as well. It isn't hard. It's not hard to get the 25 to 35 grams in, but we do have to think about it. Um, we have meal plans and things like that that kind of break things up part so that you're in, that you're ensuring that you're meeting those fruits and vegetable um, recommendations with serving sizes. Sometimes I think just visualizing that can really help people. Um, I'm also sending home with you today, or you should be getting a products to look for handout. I'm, I'm pretty big on, you know, having people look at pictures of things because I think that that kind of you know, shows you a lot. I know today I talked a lot about whole foods. I really didn't get into all the products that are out there um, that are loaded with fiber. Um, so let me talk about uh, that for a second before I get into the fiber supplementation. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that are out there that are supplemented with fiber, not supplementation like Metamucil, okay? foods that have been supplemented with fiber. And some of that I'm here for, I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with it, but let me give you an example. Okay, I had someone mention this to me the other day and I honestly, um, I had not heard of, of this before. Uh, I definitely have that. Patients come to me with products that I've never heard about, that happens. There's a lot out there, um, but this was a bagel. Okay, and I think that she found it potentially, I, you know, at a health food store, I, I imagine maybe Whole Foods, I can't remember that part, but this particular bagel, which I think was called Better Brand Bagel, maybe you guys have heard of this, okay, and maybe I just botched up the name, but anyway, it's a bagel, and it had 25 grams of protein, okay, so 25 grams of protein, and 33 grams of fiber. And so, <laughs> listen, that sounds lovely, right? So it sounds lovely. I have no idea what it tastes like, um, but it sounds lovely to just be able to knock out all your fiber in one sitting to get 25 grams of protein at breakfast from a bagel. Hey, that's a win, right? On paper, that's a win. Your digestive tract might have another opinion, okay? So I want to talk about spreading fiber out here for a second. Um, it's very important for many reasons that we're spreading fiber out throughout the day. We don't necessarily want to just get all of it in at one time. And the reason for that is we all have very different digestive tracts and what it can handle varies from person to person. 
someone who, you know, has zero issues with their gut health and, um, you know, can maybe handle these really high fiber products. There's high fiber wraps, there's high fiber cereals, there's high fiber, lots of different things that maybe have 10 to 15 plus grams of fiber per serving. And maybe you eat it and you realize I'm okay with it. There's a lot of people that have very opposite um, reactions where it could be stomach bloating or stomach upset, cramping. Um, you know, obviously it could mean either, you know, some diarrhea or certain things that you don't want to have. Okay. Right. And so bottom line, you want to make sure that we're spreading this fiber throughout the day. Okay. And be cautious of certain products that seem just too good to be true. Because a lot of times that just might be the case. And I would much rather you get it from kind of whole foods, fruits and vegetables, things like that. Um, and then maybe we sprinkle in a product here and there. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I don't want you to dismiss these whole foods and say, oh, I'm just going to get it from a supplement. Okay. And that also includes things like Metamucil. Um, so as I mentioned before, fiber supplementation is very important for some people who um, have selective eating or maybe are just on a specific diet that's a bit more restrictive for some reason. I always question why someone is doing a restricted diet that doesn't include a lot of fiber, but there might be a reason behind that and I always wanna respect it. Um, but between myself and your medical provider, which a lot of times is a clinician that we would work with, but it would also be, of course, other medical providers within your care, like your primary care or um, whoever else may be prescribing things for you. Um, I'm only making suggestions here, okay? I'm not someone that's telling people to go out and this is what they have to do. I'm just saying, you know, this might be a good idea. Let's kind of talk through what this might look like. People that have certain, you know, um, inflammatory bowel disease, or maybe they've got IBS, or maybe they have just, just a sensitive stomach, we might want to be a little hesitant about some of these fiber supplements. Um, and it can interact with certain medications. So it's really important that you have this conversation. Okay. But psyllium husk powder from Metamucil is what I typically recommend first for people. If they are having, um, a decreased amount of fiber in their diet. And I feel like this could be helpful for them. Um, it is a source of soluble fiber. It's also a prebiotic fiber. We are gonna talk about probiotics, prebiotics in a couple of months, but just to give you the short rundown of what prebiotic means, it's essentially food for your healthy gut bacteria or probiotics, okay? Which are those live living bacteria in your digestive tract that are doing all kinds of wonderful things, okay? Um, that are help keeping your gut healthy. Well, they need to eat. And so prebiotics are their food and it can come from things like bananas and onions and garlic and foods, right? But it can also be a supplement that is in something like Metamucil. Um, and the other thing I love about the Metamucil is that it does have the most clinical backing and it doesn't seem to irritate the stomach lining and it doesn't have a lot of added ingredients that can sometimes not agree with other people, um, or agree with people. Um, this particular one is no added sweeteners. That's something that you can certainly find in any supplement these days or just added ingredients, like things to make it taste really good, um, or taste better. So this doesn't have that in there, which I think is helpful. Um, but anyway, there's some more examples here, but bottom line, I really would just have that conversation with either, you know, myself or with another dietitian or with, of course, your medical provider, if you think that you might need some kind of fiber supplementation. Okay. So we're going to end with some tips on getting some more fiber into your diet. All right, so hopefully now you have a better understanding of what fiber is, what different types are, what it does for your body, um, how to you know, get it in and what some really good sources are. But now we need to know, well, how do we actually you know, make this easier for ourselves to do? So first thing you could do is leave some skin on those fruits and vegetables. There are certain things that I know I don't love with the skin on, like I can't eat a peach with skin on. I, I, I just can't, I never have. I love some peach, but I cannot eat the skin. Some people can, um, but I love like, of course, an apple with some skin or I leave skin on a cucumber, whereas some people might not be able to do that. So 
anytime you think about leaving the skin on, I think that that is going to be, of course, helpful with boosting that fiber intake. Choosing those whole grains for, versus refined grains. Whole food carbs is another way of kind of thinking about getting more fiber in. Also, when you think about refined, kind of think about white, white rice, white pasta. Those are um, not always off the table, okay? But I think if you're trying to get more fiber, the brown rice, the quinoa, the, um, the whole wheat pasta, those are gonna be those um, heartier, healthier sources to, to get into your day. Um, I know we're kind of phasing out of soup season, but adding beans to those soups, but also adding beans to salad is one of my absolute favorite things to do, um, especially in, uh, you know, as it gets warmer and we're eating a little bit more cold foods, um, I'll add a half a cup of, um, quarter cup to half a cup, it just kind of depends, of chickpeas to my salad. And black beans would be another one that I would recommend, or even some lentils. It kind of just depends on the type of salad you're eating and your preferences there. Um, let's see, adding some fresh fruit to your yogurt, to oatmeal, to salads. One little tip that I give to people, or I guess it would be um, a goal that I would give to people, a little challenge is to try to have a fruit or a vegetable every single meal, okay? That's a good place to start. Let's say you're coming from, I don't eat any fruit or vegetables. There, there's definitely... Um, no need for you to feel pressure to have to all of a sudden start eating nine servings a day here, okay? I would say, let's just try to get a serving at every meal. So we're getting at least three servings a day and we'll move from there. Um, okay, we talked about choosing the fruit over the fruit juice, right? And adding veggies to pasta dishes is one of my favorite things to do. One of my favorite ways to do pasta, okay? So I do like the bonza pasta. We're not gluten-free in our household, so we do eat whole wheat pasta and we eat other types, but I like the bonza because it has a little bit more protein and it does have a touch more fiber. Um, or I, I guess it's got very similar fiber, excuse me, but it has a little less carbohydrate in general. Um, but I really like it for that little uptick in protein. Um, but I love to add a bunch of chunky vegetables. It could be squash and zucchini and broccoli, spinach. Those would be probably four ones right there that I would love to add to it. And then I just do a drizzle of some olive oil and some lemon um, and just kind of adds this really fresh flavor. Maybe just a little bit of some Himalayan sea salt, just, just a touch, just to give it a little. And then I would add in my protein. So that could be some um, chicken, maybe grilled chicken, maybe some um, shrimp, maybe some salmon. Um, it really just depends, but that's one of my favorite ways to do pasta, load up the vegetables in it. Um, adding chia and flax to things like baked goods, yogurts, oatmeal. So that's why we're making what we're making today is to show you how to um, use chia seeds. This is another really good tip, and I've given it to a few people over the past couple of weeks, and I've gotten some really good feedback. So if you get snacky before dinner, bring out a veggie tray. This could be something maybe you purchased or you can easily make one at home. You know, just throw some baby carrots, chop up a cucumber, put it on a plate, and bring out whatever dip you like. So it could be, you know, your hummus or tzatziki. These are kind of two that we usually have. Bring it out. And then this is good for kids. Because I know as soon as I say, I'm going to start getting dinner ready, kids are going to be, I'm hungry, I'm run into the pantry. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So I think sometimes just having food available, this could also be fresh fruit too. Um, but try to get a serving of fruit or vegetable in even before your meal starts. So that's just a little added bonus. Um, and prioritizing fiber in your snack regimen. I love making a little high fiber trail mix where you might add some nuts and seeds, maybe even a little dry cereal. Kashi has a cereal that's called Go Lean, which is really good fiber, really good protein. It's good for a little crunch and you can add it to the trail mix with maybe a little bit of dried cranberry, a little raisins. Um, and then, you know, learning to read that food label. So I have the food label highlighted here. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more next time when we talk about macronutrients. We'll talk more about food labels and reading those, but fiber is going to be located right under total carbohydrate, okay? And so um, the fiber content, you know, five grams or higher is, in my opinion, a high fiber 
It doesn't mean you can't get something that doesn't have five grams of fiber in it because certain foods just naturally don't have that. But it also means that if you are looking for packaged goods, maybe this is the time for you to get curious. Um, and there's something that I didn't mention on here, but I'll mention really quickly before I get into my demo. Um, there's an app called Yucca, Y-U-K-A. And so this is something that you can download, it's free, and it has a barcode scanner. And you can kind of look at it and look at different foods and kind of say, you know, or get curious about maybe, so it rates it. I'm not the biggest fan of rating. I do not like good or bad language. For those of you who see me, you probably know this about me, but I am very kind of try to kind of think very realistically about food. And I don't love like, this is a horrible food for you, or this is the best food for you, but it does rate it. So it will kind of be brutally honest with its opinion of the food. But what I really like about it is that it gives you an insight into other options that are similar to that product that might have more fiber. It might have less added sugars. It might have you know, less saturated fat. And so what I like is that it kind of turns your head towards products you've maybe not th thought about or seen. Um, and I think it's always kind of nice to try out things that you might not realize you have like you would like. So, um, okay. Let's get into our demo here. So we are going to be making, so on the right there, you'll see the high protein overnight oats. And on the left is the chia seed pudding. I'm sure these are two things that maybe you guys have made before, but maybe people are out there who have not made these and are just kind of curious as to how to do them. Um, or you just have some general questions about them and we can talk through that. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing this for a second so you can see my screen. Um, okay, so chia seeds. As I mentioned, I really feel like these are such a powerful nutrient that they should be considered a supplement, okay? Um, they have, for two tablespoons, they have 10 grams of fiber. They have almost five grams of protein. Um, was it almost nine grams of fat, which five of that fat is from um, omega-3 fat, which is a um, heart healthy uh, fat that's normally found in things like salmon and fatty fish, but there are plant-based sources such as chia seeds. Um, lots of uh, nutrients associated with bone health, with calcium and magnesium and phosphorus. Um, it's loaded with that soluble fiber and those omega-3s, like I just mentioned, for good heart health. High protein, high fiber, great for weight management, keeps you full longer. Um, blood glucose control, blood sugar control, like we talked about before with that soluble fiber. So again, you know, you don't have to eat them in overnight oats. If you don't like oats, then there's other ways of incorporating chia. Um, so preferably soaking them overnight helps to retain and absorb some of and, and let out some of their good nutrients a little bit better than if you just eat them raw. So, you know, you could literally sprinkle them on some cereal if you wanted to. They're very flavor, they're flavorless. I mean, when they absorb water, they become gel-like. So the consistency is something that some people may not love, um, but you really can't taste it in an oat meal, like an overnight oats, but you can really taste it in a chia seed pudding. Um, and taste, I mean, you can you can notice the texture, sorry. Like you can't taste the, the it's, it's flavorless, but you notice the texture more with the chia seed pudding. Um, you could add them to yogurt, you could add them into a pudding. Um, smoothies would be a very popular way of doing it. Um, but the benefit of putting them in the oats or the chia seed and letting them sit overnight is what I just mentioned. The fact that it kind of soaks and absorbs and a lot of their nutrients are um, heightened because of that. Okay, so we're gonna start with the oat mixture. Um, and can I just highlight my really cute jars that I got? Sometimes it's it's about this, is it not? It's about cute little jars that I got off of Amazon that holds the spoon. Sometimes that's just really part of it. Um, but you do not need an overnight oats jar. You can use a bowl, okay? You can use anything, a cup, a mug. You do not need to do this, all right? This was just my own personal, uh, you know, enjoyment. All right. 
So before I get started, do I have a question? Um, yes. So we have one person that was thinking of making lentil tortillas as a wrap option for the summer. Okay. And wondering if she cooked the lentils and blend them and then cook them again, will that all that processing reduce the effectiveness of the fiber? Um, I mean, that's a good question. I, I honestly don't know the exact, you know, uh, difference that would happen with all of that. I would say, hey, this is how I would look. That is awesome that you're going to make your own tortillas like that. That is great because that's what it's all about is experimenting and trying new things out. And I think if you're loading up and being intentional about fiber throughout the whole day, I don't think a diminishing, and I don't even know how much it would reduce fiber here. I really don't know that to be honest. Um, but no, I wouldn't say that that would be significant enough to not do what, you know, to not make that. Um, all right, guys. So real quick, I'm going to add, I'm going to add this milk because I, I poured too much of it and it was starting to come out. So, um, I have half a cup of almond milk. Okay. You can use another type of milk. You could use fair life milk. We love fair life milk because we're lactose. Well, we're not all lactose free, but I'm lactose free. My husband is lactose free. And so, um, we use Fair Life and it has more protein. And so that would be a great thing to do um, if you wanted that. Um, the almond milk has a little less calories. So sometimes the oats mixtures can get a little high calorie depending on all you're putting in there. So having a little less calorie from your milk could be helpful, but I like that the Fair Life has more protein. So you could kind of take out the protein powder. You could kind of do a couple different things in that way. Um, you can use oat milk. You can use really any type of milk you would want to, but I would use milk. I would use a milk consistency. I don't know. Maybe you guys have tried water before, but I would probably just stick with like a milk alternative. Um, the next thing we're going to add is a quarter cup of plain Greek yogurt. So this is going to add, um, and I just got regular plain, plain Greek yogurt. Now you could um, do a vanilla Greek yogurt if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm gonna add that in. And then I'm gonna add on, um, let's see, a little bit of vanilla. All right, so some vanilla, I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon. Sorry, let me put it on my, okay, so I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon of the vanilla. All right. Then we're going to do um, a little bit of maple syrup. All right. So just a teaspoon. All right. So not a lot, but just a little bit of thickness. Now you could supplement that with a little honey. Um, I've used date syrup before. I don't know if you guys have tried that before. Um, okay. And then we are going to stir that up, okay? So we're gonna, I've got my little whisk. I'm just gonna kind of stir that in here. So all we've got in here right now is a little milk, a little yogurt, a little vanilla, and um, some maple syrup, okay? And ideally the point behind this is that it is very quick, okay? You kind of get, you don't, Sometimes have to put all that I'm putting in there in it, but I'm just doing that to show you kind of some combinations that you could do. All right, so we're gonna add in a half a cup of oats. Now I would use rolled oats. Um, I would not use like steel cut. Those types of oats are gonna be a little bit more coarse. Um, they're gonna be a little bit chewier um, and they don't absorb, you know, so it's just gonna not be as soft, right? So that in my opinion, might make a difference in the way it tastes. Um, but you also don't want to use quick oats because potentially, I mean, some people might not mind this, but it gets really mushy and I feel like it's already kind of soft and soft enough. So I'm going to add a half a cup of those rolled oats in. Um, all right, now we're going to add the chia seeds. So we're going to do about 
half a tablespoon. Okay, so remember, two tablespoons is what you serving. But when we spread it out through the day, it's a lot better sometimes. And I would say if you've never tried chia, that I wouldn't just load yourself up with chia to get started. The same with things like flax seeds also. Um, and then we're gonna add a little bit of protein powder. So guys, this is Orgain. I'm using a vanilla, all right? Um, so what I would say is about, this is a personal preference, okay? I, I don't love the taste of protein powder in things like this, whereas some people don't mind. I mean, you can try chocolate. There's different variations with this recipe. So you can try, you know, different things out. But um, I'm just going to do half a scoop because it's already got lots of good protein. The tea has protein. I'm going to add in a little PB2, which has protein. Um, the um, oats have a little bit of protein. And of course, your Greek yogurt has a little bit of protein. Okay. A little hard time hearing you when you turn away from the camera. Oh, sorry. Sorry, what was that? Oh, you couldn't hear me? That's okay. Yeah, they're just, whenever you turn a little bit away, it kind of fades out a little bit. So oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'll try to, I'll keep it up like this and I'll kind of bring it. Okay. okay. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, All right. So I was just saying that with the protein, um. I personally just think a little bit is fine. I wouldn't necessarily do a whole scoop. You might find that you like the um the taste of it, and then maybe you don't. So this is what kind of experimenting is all about. But there's a lot of protein in the Greek yogurt. There's some in the oats. There's definitely some in the chia. You know, you're getting good protein from this. You can also, like I said, add in Fair Life for a little extra protein. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of this PB2 because I like the flavor of it in things like this. So I am going to, you know what, I'm going to use this so that I'm a bit more exact. So I'm going to do about, about a tablespoon. It's kind of like a heaping tablespoon of it. Okay. And then I'm going to mix this up. All right. So we've added our, our chia, our oats, um, we've added a little bit of the protein powder and we've added um, the PB2. Okay, so this is going to be more of like a like a peanut buttery flavor to me, but I kind of like that. And again, there's different variations that you can do. All right, I'm going to put my lid on. And the idea is that you put this in the refrigerator. Um, for at least four hours, but you can leave it overnight, right? Overnight oats. And so uh, let's see, about a serving of this, and I'm going to show you the finished product here and what to do with it. Um, a serving of this has, since I kind of reduced the protein powder, you know, it's maybe a little bit different, but about 350-ish calories, um, around 40 carbs, which is good because it's from really good things. I know sometimes we hear certain numbers of things and we're like, oh, I don't know about that. Um, there's about 30 grams of protein. So that's what's really awesome when you add that protein powder. Now, since I cut it down, it's probably a little less, but um, all in all, and as far as fiber goes, um, let's see, there's about seven grams of fiber. So it's a really, really good thing to incorporate. And finished products, okay. So I've got my oats, I've got my oats here. Now I'm gonna show you guys the consistency is, is thick, okay? And the other thing that you can do is you can add a little bit of extra almond milk to it if you wanna kind of loosen up the texture. The other thing that you could do, which is 100% what I do, which is probably not what anyone else does because the point of overnight oats is to eat them cold, but I heat them up because I do not like cold oats. I can't get behind it. Some people love it, okay? So I heat it up, that kind of changes it a lot for me. And then, sorry, if you can't hear me, um, I'm gonna add a bunch of fresh fruit on here, okay? So use my hands, my hands are nice and clean. So I have kind of a mixture, maybe about a quarter cup to a half a cup. And this is a very lovely breakfast. And then the other thing that you could maybe add, which gives it a little something, 
is just a little sprinkle, just a little sprinkle. I bet it's not even a tablespoon, but it just gives it a little crunch, a little something. And that is a very healthy, delicious breakfast. And it will keep you full, okay? This typically keeps people pretty full. Um, all right, I'm going to pivot to the chia seed here, which shouldn't take but a second because it is very easy. I know we're kind of running out of time and I want to, is there another question that I can answer? Um, sure. Okay. So can you make four or five of these for the week and leave, how long will they last in the refrigerator? So I think that they last about five days. So yes. Yep. Especially if you're going to do the protein powder, the protein powder also thickens it up. I mean, I would say, you know, protein powder is a maybe. You could also put in a little collagen powder. This is where I can kind of help people kind of figure out some variations here. But mm. um, but yes, you can make them ahead of time. And then if it gets thick, you know, to just do what I did, where you just add just a little bit of almond milk and it really thins it up. So okay. that's what I would do. Good. Um, you also, um, someone asked, do you need the yogurt? You mentioned that you were lactose free. But yeah, yeah, you don't you eat yogurt. Um, oh, do you eat it, yogurt? I can have yogurt. So, um, especially Greek. So Greek yogurt um is strained and has less lactose. So if you are sensitive to lactose, not allergic to milk, that's fine. Right. But some people are very sensitive and can't have yogurt at all. So I can actually eat yogurt, but you do not have to do the yogurt. You you can leave that out. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, guys, so what I'm going to do is just show you real quickly the chia seed pudding. All right, so it's three ingredients. It's so fast. It's a half a cup of almond milk. It's two tablespoons of chia seeds. So guys, if you are kind of well-versed in chia, you've had it a couple times, um, or not a couple, but I mean, you, you, you eat chia, but maybe you've never tried chia seed pudding, then you could probably get away with this, but be be careful because it does have 10 grams of fiber for two tablespoons. So this is going to be a powerful fibers punch, but you can also, um, you know, kind of just start with one tablespoon and I would do just a little less milk so that it's, you know, it has appropriate thickness to it, but it's um, just going to have a half a cup of almond milk, two tablespoons of chia and a teaspoon of um, honey which you could use maple syrup, but I'm just gonna use uh, what it's asking for. All right, what other questions do I have? Um, let's see. The, do you use steel coat oats or, I think you had mentioned something about steel coat. Yeah, steel coat I actually oats. use, um, uh, the rolled oats. Okay. Yeah, the rolled oats. All right. So that is all you do, guys. Okay, that is it. So the three ingredients, again, you leave it overnight. I'm going to show you what it looks like. As you can see, lots of chia going on in there. You can kind of see the consistency. It's runny, but it's like a kind of like a pudding, right? And then the flavor-wise is very kind of milk and honey okay so it doesn't have a lot going on what i would do is add fruit for sure all right you could also add a little bit of nuts on top of that you could do a little sprinkle of some shredded unsweetened coconut um but this is just another option i know sometimes people are interested in trying things and they love i have people that love chia seed pudding um for me i'm an overnight oats girl compared to the chia seed pudding but i just wanted to feature it because it's a lovely way of highlighting chia seeds okay all right what other questions do i have um one person was sharing that wegmans has chia seed boxes with 12 okay. small packets for about five dollars okay so what the 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 portions are just already what's in the box okay nice cool Does honey and maple syrup react differently on your glycemic index than sugar 
Mm, I bet they're probably similar. So, but the thing is, okay, the amount of the amount of of um, honey and maple syrup that are in these recipes compared to all the other things that are in them, right? Protein, lots of fiber, um, you know, we're incorporating some healthy fats in there also and lot and the protein, which I maybe just mentioned, but that is going to offset. And so remember, it slows down the absorption um, and helps to keep blood sugars a bit more level. So that I'm not worried about for someone, these two things could be incorporated for someone who has diabetes, okay? So that's something that I feel, um, and if someone is sensitive and they find that it does affect their blood sugars, then there's ways for us to kind of work with that. Okay, and one more question. Um, what type of fiber is most recommended for IBS-C? Should you avoid, avoid the intake of certain fiber if you suffer from IBS? So <laughs> IBSC, right. So, I mean, when we're dealing with more um, constipation, like I mentioned, the insoluble fiber would probably be my go-to. Um, I would probably just encourage a lot of other things also, just general um, fiber in general spread throughout the day, pay attention to things that bother your stomach. Um, I would say lots of fluids would be really important. Um, but maybe more of those insoluble fibers that we kind of were highlighting. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. That's, yeah, we have a nice list of. And I would just add that someone with IBS would really benefit from meeting with a nutritionist or a dietitian to kind yeah. of help figure out. It's what, really what hard to just, in. yeah, give that, give that quick answer here. I think that that would be something that would... There's so much to it. You know, some one person that has IBS is very different than the next. So it's not, um, GI is very complicated. And so it does need a lot of conversation. Exactly. It. Mm -hmm. So that's all our questions for today. Okay. Um, and Katie, these are just great, simple recipes that you're right. They're loaded with fiber and you can, of course, add the fruit to them as well. Make them in advance. Yep. We can all make this work mm -hmm. with our working lives. <laughs> One more time. Yes. And they're pretty and they can be made ahead of time and, and you, you can, can make them in a few at a time. Um, you know, and there's different variations, especially with um, the overnight oats. So again, I, I would, if you're an oats person, I would try them, you know, and just see what you like, have fun with it. Okay, great. And you can obviously sprinkle a little cinnamon on top of that. Oh, yeah. Cinnamon's a great one. Yeah. Someone actually <laughs> mentioned to me the other day, a patient of mine, cinnamon and put some raisins in there. He said, mm. oh, that sounds really good. A little apple. Exactly. You chop up some apple. That sounds delicious. There's lots of things that you could do to make these fun. All right. Well, we're getting lots of comments that... Um, thank you so much for this informative and um, I had... A high five for heating your oats. Someone else doesn't like them <laughs> either. <laughs> I don't like them that way. Maybe in the, I don't know. I have to heat them. I just do. But it's, um, lots of people like them cold though. So you do what feels good for you. Um, there's always, there's always something out there for everybody. But this was, this was fun. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Katie. And we will look forward to um, sending this out to everyone and to seeing most of you back here in April. All right. I'll Bye. see you guys in a month.